Good morning, everyone. Uh, as you can see, it's not Pastor this morning. He's still on vacation. And uh, I'm Frank Porter, and I'm filling in for him. Uh, it's nice to see you. I mean, uh, not see you here this morning, but uh, you can see me. And uh, we may be experiencing a little technical difficulties, so if my lips and my voice don't match up, just don't watch. Listen. Okay? Uh, let's see how that goes. But uh, we'll pray that the Lord blesses it, whatever happens. And I want to thank Keith again for all his work on this. It's, it's not easy. We've been messing with this for a while. Okay. <clears throat> so this morning we're going to talk about who do you trust when your world turns upside down? And we've all been there. Um, sometimes it happens really quick. You get a phone call. And sometimes you can see it coming. Where you know that they're going to lay people off at work. And it's just a matter of time before your number is called. Uh, either way, it's really difficult. And what do we do? Who do we look to uh, in those situations? So let's pray. Lord, we're living through such unprecedented times for us. Uh, fear is a very familiar emotion to us. It can be very difficult to know what actions to take, especially since we've heard that the wrong decision could cost us or a loved one our lives. Help us look to your word for the wisdom and guidance through these turbulent times and I pray for the leaders of our country. Uh, I pray that you would give them wisdom well beyond their years and uh, the courage to do the right thing and not who gains political favor, but do the right thing. And I also pray for the leaders of our church, of this body, as I know that they are struggling to do the right thing and figure out what your will is. And uh, I pray for those men this morning, and I thank you for them. And bless this time in your word, in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so, um, there are some of us, perhaps, that think that they know exactly what to do in this time. Um, we should do this, or we should do that, or no, we can't do this, or... And then there's other, other people here uh, of us who would never dare to say an opinion as to what they think we should do, what's right or what's wrong, because they'd be, they're so afraid of getting it wrong. And that's all okay. Everybody clearly has an opinion, and um, that's fine. Um, and we can talk about it and try to get it right. But all of us, hopefully, will be praying uh, for God's, God's will. will. This, this is, is happening through all, all the churches, churches in America and around the world. And um, I just pray uh, for wisdom for us, and I ask for your prayers, uh, continued prayers for the leaders of the country and for the leaders of our body here, uh, that you would uh, strengthen them and give them wisdom. Um, so I've been invited to the last two elders' meetings, and I want to reassure you that each of these godly men are praying earnestly for you. Um, they're praying for wisdom. They're praying for unity. They're praying to get back what we got, what we had when we closed. Um, you know how good it was to be in the house of the Lord before we shut down. And this morning I just want to talk about trusting God that uh, he builds the church and not us and that we trust him to bring it back. Um, there are many positive signs already of the faithful being faithful and we appreciate that very much and I'm sure you, you're blessed for your faithfulness. 
but I just want to reassure, reassure you this morning that uh, the men are on it. They're meeting every other week or as often as necessary. It's such a fluid situation. Uh, please give them patience and prayers as we work through it. So this morning we're going to spend just a few minutes, and I really mean a few, uh, and one of the my favorite parts of Scripture, which is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. So if you want to look it up, you can. Hopefully a lot of us have that memorized and can just spit it out. Uh, but uh, I'm be reading the New American Standard Version, and it says... Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not unto your own understandings. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. So I can't think of too many more verses that are more applicable to this situation than these verses. Uh, there's so much in these verses. Um, what does it mean to trust in the Lord? for everything, and not just when we're in a crisis, um, not just uh, when God blesses us, and that's easy, and we say thank you, God, and praise God, and everything, but on a daily basis, uh, are we thankful for being stuck in our house? I know I'm not, but I'm working on it. Um, and I want us, to, I want to encourage each of us to put our trust in God. Uh, he, he holds tomorrow. He knows what tomorrow brings, and uh, we certainly don't. None of us, whatever your prediction is, if you think you know all the answers, or if you think you don't know any of the answers, none of us would be right. Uh, all of the politicians and the medical people, they all have predictions and models and all that stuff, and they're almost all wrong. And they are professionals, they do it for a living. So nobody knows, but we know who knows, and that's God. And with that trust brings peace in turbulent times. So one of the things that you'll know if you're trusting God regularly is how much peace you have in your life. Uh, think about that for a minute. Are you at peace with today, with what's going on right now? You don't have to like it. You don't have to say it's thrilling. You don't have to say you, you can say you don't like it. But do you trust God that he's going to pull us through this? Um, so, trust in the Lord with all your heart, with all your heart, and lean not unto your own understandings, which we all have an opinion, we all have an understanding, lean not unto those understandings. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Powerful. In verse 7 and 8, do not be wise in your own eyes. We are all wise in our own eyes. Again, we like to think we're right. But the Bible says, do not be wise in your own eyes in verse 7. Fear the Lord and turn from evil. So again, are we trusting God? Another thing that we, we know is if we're fearing God. Are we at peace? And are we fearing God? Not trembling that he's going to strike us with lightning. It's not really that fear. It's fear, it's reverence. It's knowing that God's in charge. He's in control of everything. He's in control of every mosquito that bites you or the one that doesn't bite you. He's in control of every hair on top of my head, which I wish he had more of. Um, but he is in charge. He's in charge of when you're born, and he's in charge of when you die. He's in charge of the whole deal. In fact, the Bible says there's a time to be born, and there's a time to die. That's all up to God. Verse 8, it will be healing to your body. 
and refreshment to your bones. Now, I know my bones could use some refreshment. I don't know about yours. Uh, My bones don't feel so great. So first, we should trust God enough and focus on his word. The Lord wants us to focus our lives on his word. Uh, Verse 1 through 4 in Proverbs 3. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. You know, this isn't just talking here. This, This is serious. If you trust God and you follow these commands, for length of days and long life and peace he will add to you. He means that. He's dead serious. Are we? Verse 3, let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Verse 4, and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. So here God speaks as a loving father to his children. And he uses a repeated pattern. First, God makes a wise request. And then he promises a wonderful reward after it. So listen for this in verse 1 and 2. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. In effect, God is saying, don't forget my word. Stay focused on it. And it's pretty hard to get too far off the path if our focus is on the word. Regardless of our opinions or whatever, because it's going to keep us humble. And even though we all have opinions or whatever, we still have to trust God. And... uh, And if we're trusting God and we're focused on his word, then there's going to be humility that comes with that. That, you know, even if I am right, I'm still going to listen to everybody else and hear what they have to say and consider what they think and what what they're getting from the word. So these verses remind us that God's word is not just designed to get us to heaven. It's designed to give us the best possible life down here on earth as well. Right? I mean, once you're saved, that's just the beginning. Uh, We want God's word to live and breathe through us. And that's where we get peace and comfort and uh, long life, long, long days. Since God's word is so important, we need to focus on it every day. Uh, Robert Sumner, I want you to listen to this. This is really important. So if my lips aren't matching my words, just close your eyes. Robert Sumner wrote the amazing story of a man from Kansas. And he was severely uh, injured in an explosion. His face was badly disfigured. He lost his eyesight as well as both hands. Now, this man happened to be a new Christian. And one of his greatest sorrows was that he couldn't any longer read the Bible. Uh, There wasn't any way he could think of to do that. Then, one day, he heard about a lady in England who read Braille with her lips. So, think about this guy. First of all, he's so dedicated and motivated, he doesn't give up. And he's open to anything. Even if you have to read God's word with your lips, he says, I'm going to do that. Is that what God's word means to us? But that's not the rest of the story. So hoping to do the same, he sent for some of the books of the Bible in Braille. He sadly discovered that as he tried to read with his lips, that the nerve endings in his lips had also been destroyed by the explosion. So despite all that effort and determination, 
another failure. And you've got to be saying, most of us will be saying, God, what, what do I got to do? Um, but, again, he doesn't quit. One day, as he brought the Braille pages to his lips, he's still trying to read them through his lips. His tongue happened to touch a few of the raised letters. And instantly, he could feel the words with his tongue. And he could read it. And he said, I can read the Bible with my tongue. And by the time a story was written about him, the man had read the whole Bible through four times with his tongue. Now, if that's not sobering and humbling, I don't know what is. So, do I have that kind of dedication? I don't know. I hope I do. But that's inspiring, and it, and it really makes us think that we, we need to really take this seriously. So we must trust God enough to focus on his word, because that's where all the answers are. The, only, the, the best part about being a Christian is we got the answers that all the world's ser- searching for in the Bible. Not out of our head, not our opinions, but God's word has the answers. And we have to trust him enough to follow his guidance. Trust him enough that when, the Bible, when we're convinced the Bible says this, that we do it. Even though it sounds crazy, even though I've tried forever to read the Bible with my lips, and suddenly I figure out with my tongue. Now, your tongue's pretty sensitive, and you kind of need it. And, you, you know, you're going to get calluses on your tongue by reading that way. I mean, uh, it's a pretty determined guy. And if you get calluses and it stops working, I mean, you know. So anyway, God is telling us to follow his guidance in verses 5 and 6. Remember, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't give up. Don't uh, give in. And lean not on our own understandings. Look, we don't understand this pandemic The world's been through pandemics before, and we've learned from it. Uh, But we don't understand this pandemic. Uh, The the doctors are saying, yeah, we're starting to figure it out, but they aren't. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. One foot in front of the other. That's all it is. You don't know tomorrow. You don't know next week, but you can do one step in front of the other. Then you can say, yeah, God wants me to do this. So God says, fear the Lord. But godly fear is the great missing ingredient in American society today. That's why so many people are trifle with God. They put no more weight in how to live uh, before God than they do with what box of cereal to pick out at Walmart or what movie to see on a Friday night. We must not trifle with God. Rather, we should tremble before God. Isn't God our friend, you say? Of course he is. He's the best friend we'll ever have. In John 15, 13, Jesus said, Greater love hath no man than this, than he laid down his life for his friends. And that's exactly what Jesus did for us on the cross. But in the Old Testament, the best known friend, the best known man, known as a friend to God, was Abraham. And in Genesis 22, 12, it says, when Abraham had the knife raised to sacrifice his son Isaac. Picture that. You're standing there. You're going to sacrifice your son Isaac. You're not hesitating. God says, do not lay a hand on the lad or do anything for him. For now I know that you fear me. Now, you could say that there was a lot of faith involved in that that Abraham said, no matter what happens, I trust God. That's true. But fear and trust go together. He must have been scared out of his mind. But his trust was there. You could say, well, that's Old Testament stuff. But in Matthew 10, Jesus was speaking to his disciples, and he warned them about upcoming persecution. He knew what was going to happen. 
in the next few weeks. He knew exactly what was going to happen to each one of these guys, his, his, the closest people to him on earth, and the suffering that they would endure. He knew, and he was warning them, be sober-minded, don't, uh, persecution's coming, get ready. He knew every cut, every blow, every bruise, every tear they were going to suffer. They had a reason to be afraid. And so do we. Sometimes our persecution in this world, it's only going to get worse. Um, there's a lot of persecution against churches, if you haven't been paying attention. But in Matthew 10, 28, Jesus says, Don't fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both the soul and the body in hell. That's where the fear is. So God says, fear the Lord. In other words, live in godly reverence. And notice that this goes hand in hand with trusting in God. It's not an either or thing. So, Proverbs 3, 5, God tells us to trust him. Verse 7, he tells us to fear him. So we trust and we tremble. We tremble and we trust. A lot of scripture bear this out. God deserves all of our reverence and respect. So trust him. Trust God enough to focus your life on his word. Trust him enough to follow his guidance. And trust him enough to fear the Lord. When we do this, we will reap all the blessings for obeying his commands. It's a guaranteed deal. Guaranteed. God doesn't, God doesn't uh, say, oh, well, I forget that this time. No, he blesses every time your promises are kept. Um, my eyes haven't been so good lately. They've been very blurry. And I haven't been able to read so well. And I'm trying to go to the doctor, but that, that's been put off. So it's rescheduled anyway. But I can't really read much right now. But I'm thankful that I don't have to read Braille with my tongue to read God's Word. I can listen to it on my phone. That's amazing. Any scripture I want, I can listen to it on my phone. I can make it go fast or go slow. or It's a total blessing. So whatever your deal is, whatever keeps you from reading the Word, figure it out. You'll be blessed for it. So thanks for this time. I appreciate it, everyone. Uh, I pray that Jesse will be back next week and all refreshed. And uh, I'm going to ask Brother Keith to close us in a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for this time that we can come together and worship you, Lord. We pray that you will remind us of the need to take your word seriously and to spend time in your word getting to know you because your word is how you reveal yourself to us. We just pray that you will help us to remember that, help us to seek you out by getting into your word, studying your word, paying attention. And Lord, we pray that you would work in all of our hearts that we might be praying for the unity of our church so that when we get back together, we'll be prepared for growth. In Jesus' name.